nation's rural electric cooperatives provide more than just power for their communities. Many are actively involved in volunteer service as well. Cooperative leaders explain why they give back to the communities they serve. Thousands of college students graduate each year, and we want to bring them back to their rural roots. A look inside the many careers available in the heartland of America. Good morning, and thanks for watching the Market Day Report. I'm Janet Atkinson. In addition to electric service, electric co-ops are deeply involved in their local communities via development and also revitalization projects. Just this weekend, Touchstone Energy Cooperatives were in Nashville for a rural community service project. And joining us once again is Touchstone Energy Cooperatives Executive Director Lynn Moore and Doug Miller with Ohio's Electric Cooperatives and Touchstone Energy as well. Thanks for setting back down with us once again as we said you had an activity here in Nashville on Saturday. Tell us about that. What That's was it? Right. Um, our project on Saturday is our, our 10th anniversary project for the service uh, initiative and communities that we serve are, are folks that, that sometimes need a little help and so mm -hmm. what we've done and, and made a practice of in the last 10 years is to, to seek some need in the community and help to find a way to fill it. Okay. Whether it's a Habitat Project, a Rebuild America, United Way, all those organizations that do it really well, we partner with them and we bring in volunteers from all over the country. Saturday, we had 126 volunteers from 20 states that joined for a day of service. And it was everything from painting and refurbishing to outside projects. So mm -hmm. it's a variety. And, and those folks are just willing to, to step in and help and take their day off and serve the community. And Doug, you were one of those folks. I was, yeah. I worked really hard. <laughs> Tell us what, what activity did you tackle? Uh, I was actually uh, working on clearing brush on a, uh, a lot that was formerly a, a, uh, a housing uh, complex, and so they have a number of uh, facilities that they're upgrading to be able to, to uh, place uh, families in uh, that need some assistance with their housing. Uh, so uh, we were just clearing off some lots to, to enable them down the road. Uh, the other volunteers can come in and help build uh, new homes and, and new facilities for people to live in. Now you mentioned that of course this is an ongoing thing that you guys take on every year. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, I imagine you probably physical labor and all that kind of good stuff. Mm -hmm. Everybody's a little bit sore. And what about uh, the heartfelt uh, part of it? How did you feel after you wrapped up that day and you look back at what you accomplished? Well, the nice thing that they're able to do is um, this year they gave them an opportunity to go look at the before and after so you could go see the projects early on, go back and see the impact that you made at the end of the day. And I think mostly for people that do this and they want to be part of the community, they would do this no matter what. It doesn't matter where we are, what kind of conditions, because they feel like they've created a bond with this group that typically volunteers, but yeah. also with the people that now are in that community where they just, just spent a day with them. So. It's a personal interaction that they have. They get to talk to folks and, and know who they're working for. And why is it so important for Touchstone Energy to do this kind of a project, this kind of a service for local communities? And I, th I think it really uh, encompasses the one of the core values of commitment to community. Mm -hmm. And I think you know where this this community service project started and really got its legs was on the heels of the hurricanes down in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And so when we we <clears throat> we came to the community right after the hurricanes and we seen the devastation. Uh, we've seen how much help they needed, and you know, so it's not. We, I think, our our folks just kind of thought that you know, it was not enough to bring our convention business uh, business to them, mm -hmm. is that we really wanted to help people, and I think we were really to get, uh, able to get in on the ground floor and just help some people uh, in in New Orleans that that really needed some help, and they're good people. They just happen to be in a bad circumstance, and so that's kind of how it got its legs. And we've just continued that now for, for more than 10 years. So, How do you guys go about choosing the projects that you're going to work with? Um, we go into the community and partner with the local co-op. So here it was Middle Tennessee Electric Cooperative and uh -huh. Tennessee Electric Cooperative Association. We're kind of the boots on the ground and did all the initial planning to <clears throat> find where that need you know, was happening. So mm -hmm. um, we'll do that each time we go to a service project area. And so we let those folks that are local and know what's going on in the community mm -hmm. help guide us. So we may do financial support. We may offer um, just a, a sort of a promotion, if you would, within our organization. But we've had folks to say, this goes so well, how could you expand it and do more of it? So we're looking for other opportunities, too. Do we have an idea where the next opportunity might be? Well, we'll definitely be in Orlando next year for the, the national meeting again. Mm -hmm. um, but throughout the year, we want to make sure that we're creating an opportunity, even in our regional areas in the fall. Mm -hmm. So local co-ops do their initiative. 
we take it to a regional and then also a national level. So we like to see this just continue to have a ripple effect, mm -hmm. but let the cooperatives choose where that need uh, is most, most met in their community. And for them to choose a place or to, to I guess, run the idea of the flagpole, I mean, mm -hmm. is it a long process or is it something that can also maybe serve an immediate need? Well, both ways. Okay. Um, local co-ops can reach out and they have programs in place now, things like what we call Operation Roundup, where they're mm -hmm. allowed to to take some financial uh, opportunities with what they may have left over as proceeds and invest those in scholarships, mm -hmm. uh, local programs that, you know, that, that help the community in other ways, food banks, that sort of thing. So we can go from every, everyday needs all the way to a, a greater need, which might even be building a house, you know, with, mm -hmm. with habitat. So, yeah. All right. Well, you've clean brush and all that kind of stuff. You ready to build a house now? Uh, hey, we're ready to take <laughs> on all comers. Yeah, it'll it be a lot of fun. Well, if folks wanted to yeah. learn more, is there a place that they could learn more about what you guys are accomplishing? Sure. We have touchstoneenergy.com is the website that we would guide folks to. And also, you can check with your local co op on that right. site. There's a map there, and you can find your local co op and see what they're doing in the community, too. Yeah, we, right. we have a number of local community service projects. Uh, I know the state of Indiana has a day of customer service or community service that they all kind of do in one day. And so there are just a ton of opportunities. I mean, we're very ingrained in the fabrics of our community. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's who we are. You know, that's where we are. All right. So. Well, thank you for sitting down Thanks. with us once again. We certainly appreciate thank it. Thank you. Absolutely. Again, talking with Lynn Moore and Doug Miller with Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. They're in Nashville, Tennessee for a conference this week and sitting down and joining us.